What's up, Rito? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and I've got an incredibly important question for you guys. Something that only you, the audience, my friends out there on the other side of the YouTube screen, something only you can answer from viewing all my videos, from getting to know me like this. I need to ask you a question right now. Is Shade Tree Surgeon a Karen? I'm actually kind of being serious right now, and I hate to say Karen because, you know what? I have friends named Karen, and uh, they really get a bad rap right now, man. Karens are getting uh, really just brutalized on the internet. Well, and uh, a lot of the Karens I know do not deserve it. They ain't like that, all right? Anyway, here's the deal. You know, I'm not usually the guy who asks to speak to a manager because I'm usually not in the habit of doing anything that requires me to speak to the manager. Uh, it's not really how I roll into restaurants or stores or anything like that, but I was renting a storage unit from a place called Extra Space Storage. They're all over the place. You probably have one in your town too. It's a big chain. And I've been renting a unit at Extra Space Storage for the past three or four years. I mean, I've had it for a long time. Well, I got a phone call yesterday saying I hadn't paid my bill in three months and it was gonna cost me uh, about $50 in late fees and $150 in a foreclosure fee because apparently I hadn't paid my bill in three months. Now, I know I look like a scumbag and uh, I kinda am a scumbag sometimes, but I pay my bills, okay? I pay my bills, it comes out automatically. I said, sir, what are you, what are you talking about? I have it on uh, auto pay. I there's no way I didn't pay my bill. He goes, well, it hasn't come out for three months. And I said, was I called? And he said, yes, we called and left a voicemail. Well, that was the first problem. I said, you didn't call and leave a voicemail because I never got a voicemail and I didn't get a voicemail because I don't like voicemails. I don't have a voicemail box set up. There's no voicemail. You could not have left me a voicemail. What I do is when I see a missed phone call, I return it and I never returned a phone call from extra space storage. And I know that because I would have, because I didn't even answer the call that they called yesterday on. I returned it. So being lied to about something like that, that's very easily provable was kind of annoying. So I said, well, was an email sent out? Did you, did you send me an email saying I, I would have fixed this immediately. I would have said, oh, uh, a payment didn't come out. Well here, let me, I'll come up and pay cash. I'll, I'll pay that immediately. The storage unit isn't very expensive. It's not like I don't have the money. It's not even about the $200 really that I'm going to charge. It's not, I don't really want to spend $200. That sucks. $200 could really help uh, these Harleys get on the road. <laughs> you know, it's a, I could use it, but it's not like I don't have it. I have $200. And then he said, uh, well, the email, we, we tried sending an email, but it's not a valid email address. And I said, that's real odd because I've gotten emails from Extra Space many times. And why don't you go ahead and uh, read that email off to me? Well, he read my email off to me. And when he got to the surgeon part, he said, uh, S-U-R-G-O-N. And I said, Bubba, I hate to tell you this, but surgeon's got an E in it. Now I might've graduated early in the 10th grade, but I still know how to spell surgeon. Now here's where it gets annoying. So I ended up going up there and initially I was gonna record it, not because I, I wanted to be a jerk or anything like that, but because I just felt like I've kind of gotten the short end of the stick here. I feel like I didn't do anything wrong. I've paid for years and not had a problem. I don't understand why their negligence is they didn't enter the email address right. They, they didn't call or if they did call, they didn't try very hard hard. They didn't send me a text message. It was not reached out to in any way. I was just called one day and said, hey, you owe us $200 or you can't get your stuff out of the storage unit. And I feel like that's not my fault because it's their fault. If they put the email address in wrong or change it because I've gotten other emails from them. I don't, I don't know what happened there. So I go in the store and I didn't record it because I pulled out my camera and I asked the guy, I said, you guys have cameras rolling in here? He said, yes. I said, do you mind if I have my camera rolling in here? And he just got real upset and it's not his fault. He just, he's the manager there, but he can't make these kinds of decisions. And he got upset enough that I didn't want to pull my camera out. After all, he's just the bearer of bad news. And I really don't like to shoot the messenger, but I laid everything out. I said how long I'd been there for. I said, I never received an email and I pointed out on a screen and said, my email address is spelled wrong. You guys put it in there wrong and I don't have a voicemail. And he said, uh, and he said he didn't call me, ended up showing a note that said I was called and a voicemail was left, which is just not true because I don't have a voicemail box set up. I doubt they ever even called me at all because I would have returned it. And he then explains to me, he goes, I can't make these decisions. I can't pull these fees off of here. I can only send this up the line of command and have somebody else do it and they're not gonna call you they'll call me and I'll have to tell you so you won't ever even get to speak to anybody so apparently speaking to anyone at extra space storage
storage above the store manager level is impossible, which just makes the company seem really shady, like the kind of company that just doesn't call you for three months or enters your email address and says, hey, now you gotta pay $200 because we suck. And then he proceeded to tell me, he goes, I really wanna give you better news than this, and he was visibly upset. I was not trying to upset him, I was keeping very calm, I wasn't yelling, but he was visibly upset because I have to say, they were very wrong. They, there was the wrong email address in there. I don't have a voicemail, so they did everything wrong, and he was upset because I'm sitting there looking at him going like, what are you gonna do about this? And unfortunately, he couldn't do anything, and he told me, he goes, look, I'm just being really honest with you right now. I'll send this email right, up right now, but there is absolutely 0% chance that they're going to take these fees off. So I just paid it. I just paid it because it's not about the money to me. It wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the $200. I have $200 and if I legitimately owe a debt, I'm certainly going to pay it and I have a lease there. I signed a lease. The lease says that if I don't pay the bill, I'm gonna have to pay a late fee. So they're well within their legal rights there. I, I don't have a leg to stand on. They really do have me over a bucket. I'm gonna have to pay the money unless they take it away. I just felt like it was pretty hinky how it went down and they entered my email address wrong and they didn't really try to contact me that hard and. I would have fixed it immediately if they did, and they didn't. So uh, basically the end of that story is, I was a little annoyed because I didn't wanna to have to spend $200 on that. It ain't about the $200. It's about the fact that they didn't try to contact me. So man, extra space storage. <laughs> Not the manager's fault. The guy who talked to me, very, very upset. He was very upset. I could see he was visibly upset. He was more upset than I was because it just, it, it, look at me. I'm, I'm ugly. I'm smelly. I, I point my fingers. I've got a bunch of gold teeth. I'm not exactly the most pleasant person to have looking at you and be upset with you. I could understand that looking at me looking at you and I am upset and you're wrong is not the best place to be. It's not a very fun place to be because I'm because of who I am and the way I speak. So I was really trying to take it easy on the guy. I didn't want to put him through the ringer. So I said, chief, it ain't you. I have no, absolutely no malice towards you. I'm just gonna pay the bill and walk out of here. Man, extra space storage. Uh, that's pretty hinky, man. Anyway, uh, that's enough about Tree Tree Surgeon being a Karen. I'll leave it up to you guys, decided whether that was a Karen move or not. Uh, let's work on some motorcycles. Right now, about to head up to the ride factory. My man Joe up there, who's the, the big time metric tech Joe, is an absolute genius, man. Hilarious, too. Joe is one of the funniest dudes out, and you know he doesn't always say a whole lot, but when he does say something, it just freaking, it's always a gut buster, man. He asked us uh, if I had some handlebars lying around here, and just so happens I do. And when somebody's an absolutely amazing metric technician, and they ask you for a favor, you do it. You can take that one to the bank. It's Shade Tree Surgeon's general rule of thumb is that when somebody who's very skilled and a whole lot smarter than you asks you for a favor, you just go ahead and do that one, Chief, all right? Because later on, it's probably going to pay dividends. And on top of that, Joe's just a great guy. The boys at the Ride Factory are great people. And he actually has already helped me out. He helped me out on my Ducati Multistrada. My other Karen moment. Was I a Karen in that moment, too? I, I really I really don't know. I try not to ruin anybody's day. I'm not trying to be a jerk here. I don't know if I was a Karen about the Ducati thing anyway. But Joe is the one who armed me with the knowledge to walk in there and just really uh, really freaking put those guys dicks in the dirt over there Ducati. It didn't work because they just said no anyway, <laughs> even though I was right. Uh, and just right without a shadow of a doubt, there's no like nothing I did wrong there. But anyway, that's a story that happened a different time and maybe will continue in the future. There's a new Ducati dealership now, so now I can say it was Eurocycles. Eurocycles, I didn't say it before, even though everybody guessed it. Eurocycles is a dealership that screwed me over on my Ducati. There's a new Ducati, there's a Ducati of Tampa now, so I might go try to meet those guys and see if they do business any better than Eurocycles does. Anyway, let's go to the Ride Factory and say what's up to Joe. As we always say, support your local motorcycle shop, because guess what, when you want to call somebody <laughs> and you want someone to pick up the phone when you got a question about a part or your motorcycle, guess what, you don't exactly get Amazon on the phone. Jeff Bezos ain't gonna pick up the phone and tell you uh, what the part number for your Sportster clutch is, okay? And uh, that's why we're here. The whole assembly, so you're centering. Yeah, guess what? Jeff Bezos ain't gonna tell you how it works either. <laughs> I never fail to enjoy uh, the inception of somebody who has gone from just watching the channel to being in the Discord to showing up at the Forgotten Angels events to becoming a friend to now working at the Ride Factory. 
That's a, there's a lot of different stuff that came, all came down the pipe for you to be up here at the ride factory turning around. She's like, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. She said I couldn't do it, so I said, fuck him. Was it me? No. <laughs> No, it wasn't you. Somebody said, yo, okay, dude, whatever you say. Yeah. Hey, that'll always get me going, man. Anytime someone says I can't do something, I was like, guess what? I'm going to try really hard and hurt myself and prove you right. Hold up here. That's usually how it goes down. I might look like an idiot, but... Yeah, well, back at the shop and hopefully getting the Green Goblin off the lift today. We had a, we took it up there to Brian. Sportsters, they come with this weird spring plate kit and the clutches. I don't, I'm not sure exactly why they do that, but it goes bad. The rivets come out, they can screw everything up. So if you have a Sportster, it's not a bad idea to get the extra plate kit in there anyway. And we're pretty sure that's what was causing our problem, but either way, it needed to go in there. So it's okay that we're doing it regardless. So let's slap this sucker back together. All right, guys, it's yet another day. We've left the Green Goblin and the Dirtster, the old dirty bastard behind, and it's time for me and David from Forgotten Ages, who doesn't have a cool name yet. Usually, I'm, I can't think of anything. Okay, my brain's not working yet. We gotta think of an awesome name for David, for freaking uh, tall, dark, and handsome over here. Leave your best bet, <laughs> leave your best guess in the comments, or your best, uh, your best shot at naming David something absolutely amazing, befitting his stature as a helper of the needy, friend to the the unworthy and a all around great guy and a maker of amazing poutine. The Canadian, the Canadian, not carouser, that's your old life. <laughs> not the Canadian carouser. Anyway, heading up to Bert's Harley Davidson. Let's ride, it's beautiful out. I got my Odin jacket on, it's my first time in Florida that I've gotten to use it, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Let's rock and roll, baby. No longer the Canadian carouser, now the magnificent Montreal monster. The majestic Montreal misfit. No, he's more like a protector of misfits, not a misfit himself. You know, out of everybody in the crew, to be totally honest with you, old David back there has probably got the coolest stories. He was a professional football player, both in Canada and in America. His father was a Golden Globes champion. He used to spar with Muhammad Ali. And he's got pictures for uh, reasons and stories that are his own to tell with uh, just about uh, more famous faces than I could ever expect to see in my life. He's ridden a motorcycle across the country way more times than I have. And I'll tell you all what, growing up in the 70s in a rural area as a young black man, I don't care if it was in the sticks in America or the sticks and <laughs> surrounded by French Canadians, that's a dude who went to the school of hard knocks, all right? David is chock full of character. Oh, baby. Four books for ethanol three. This sucker's getting regular these days, bud. 18 bucks to fill it up. Not bad. It didn't used to be bad when that was super. <laughs> like I said, it'll run on regular. I usually put something nicer in it, but when gas prices get but four bucks a gallon, baby, you're gonna have to do with the scrapple. I can't even remember where I got these from, but thank you to whoever slipped a magic card that says swamp on it in there. Dismal backwater in the swamp. Dismal backwater swamp. Sounds like a good place for a shade tree surgeon first date. All right, Burt's Barracuda, OCC Roadhouse. Let's see what the boys up here got going on for us on this uh, dreary, one of the uh, like seven dreary winter days we get a year. Every other day is pretty much nice. Me and David here on our Hondas, deep in enemy territory, all right? Oh my God, that is a... I'm not a big fan of the skull gas caps. I could probably stick, skip that part, but I do like everything else about this bright green soft tail over here. Got that cholo style with the white walls. I dig it. Just walk out to see out here with my man Grant. Do you have an Instagram? Uh, yeah, eight hangers. But eight hangers? Yeah. You got you got eight hangers? <laughs> or is there no underscores? Or no like eight hangers, eight hangers sixty nine four twenty? <laughs> like <laughs> you got eight hangers, man. It's like damn, dude, you got to sell that one. I'm talking to Grant here. He's actually the guy who picked up Shelby. The very only time the gold, my gold, green gold wing, the mail order glide ever broke down was when Shelby was riding it. Grant's the guy who picked him up. He's got an eighty five uh, FXRT that he's rebuilding and. 
and he's got an 85 gold wing, so a man after my own heart here. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, the gold wings and FXRs for some reason go hand in hand. Don't ask me why. Up here at Burt's, the man himself, Mo Colors, and Jimmy, his enforcer back there, are picking up some very, very cool parts. Uh, by the way, that is an FXR T fairing that's going to go on the low rider giveaway over here, and Mo is going to do what he does, which is absolutely magic. And I don't know how he does it. I'm not sure he knows either, but it I always know. happens. I just fall asleep. <laughs> I pass out. I, I have a gin fit, and then it just shows up. <laughs> a gin fit. I love it. Oh, so your wife's a painter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys aren't going to see, have seen anything like this. This is going to be super, super cool. Always fun to walk in a Harley Davidson dealership and, uh, you know, just see a random pan head sitting around. Although, is that an actual pan head or is it an SNS pan head? Somebody smarter than me could probably tell. I can't. Yeah, the difference is, is the SNS repop motor runs really well. So it got shrimp and grits. Yeah, it doesn't come with an egg. But uh, ask and ye shall receive, baby. <laughs> I, it can't be shrimp and grits without a fried egg on top, okay? Mo got fried chicken and, and uh, mac and cheese. Jimmy got a pulled pork burger. David got a plate of something that looks really good. Nachos. Delicious. I am full of grits, shrimp, and andouille sausage, baby. I could use a nap at this point. I got the itis. Some of you guys can be sitting around the fireplace later on tonight, so if you guys are up to it, you guys want to come. Ride I will. Back. Let's ride back together. Yep. I'm sure you split off. If I see you later tonight, I will. Wow, that cold day from earlier has turned into an absolutely beautiful sunny day, as uh, Florida is wont to do come January and February. I think it's going to about do it for this one, boys. Good meeting there with Mo and Jimmy, talking about the paint job, the paint scheme that's going to be on the giveaway Lowrider S. In case you guys didn't know, we are making a Lowrider S right now, as you saw, with a, a fairing from what Russ Wernemont designed. Russ Wernemont Designs actually donated that fairing because 100% of the money that is that is bought through raffle tickets, 100% of that money is donated to Forgotten Angels to help children who've aged out of foster care to help build them tiny poems and get them the start in life that they never got from their parents or from the state or from pretty much anyone until David and Cindy started taking care of them. So many people are coming together on this one. We have uh, Russ Wernemont Designs donated in the fairing. Of course, uh, Bert Spiracuda, Bert himself, uh, coming up with a lowrider S. Harley Davidson, Harley Davidson Corporate, the motor company, actually donated the 131 that's going in it. They said, we got a 131 freaking crate motor with your name on it for Forgotten Angels, and they sent that down on a pallet. All of this feels really, really good, and now, of course, Mo coming in to paint the vehicle. Uh, Mo Colors, who just is, has painted every single motorcycle I've ever owned, all of them with a nice paint job anyway. <laughs> including my chopper and my my triumph and a couple other bikes that i've had that are custom no one touches my bikes except for mo he is the only person i will trust to paint my bikes and there's a reason for that and one of the reasons is that he's a very good friend of mine and i've known him since i was 21 the other reason is he is the best end of story full stop period not another sentence mo colors is the best. Uh, whoever wins this bike for 25 bucks, I'll have a raffle a raffle link down below. Whoever wins this bike, you are getting a hell of a motorcycle. A lowrider S with a Russ Wernemont Designs FXRT fairing. It's going to have a custom paint job from Mo Colors. A 131 crate motor, so it's not even built off 114. A 131 crate motor with no miles on it. Legend suspension. Uh, they weren't able to work with us this time, but I hear they're good folks, so we did actually purchase the Legend suspension. Uh, but it's this is going to be a hell of a motorcycle. And for 25 bucks, it can be your motorcycle. And even if you don't win, this is bad people doing good things, baby. This is gambling for a good cause. We are chaotic good. All of your money goes to an amazing cause. It goes to help out these kids. 100% of it, too. Like I said, you saw the motorcycle David's riding, and you saw the house he lives in. He ain't obvious. He's very obviously not taking a dime from this. I don't take a dime from this. You can feel good about where this money goes. It doesn't hit any branches on the way down. It truly helps these kids who have just been forsaken, screwed over, and abused by pretty much everyone in their life before the age of 18. When they turn 18, they're made homeless and they're just opened up to more abuse and more just peril and just this heartbreak, such a heartbreaking story. And that's where Dave and Sydney come in, and that's where you come in with your donation and your 25 bucks, which is going to help these kids out. And guess what? 
you might win a Ford Ranger and a, and a Harley Davidson with a 131. So <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that good karma will come right back around on you in the form of that. But even if it doesn't, you can feel good about it. And right now, the odds are pretty good. I think we the odds right now are like one in 3,000. This isn't like the lottery, okay? This is better odds than playing a scratch off. <laughs> Either It's really not like that crazy. People are like, oh, my one in a million chance. No, it's not. It's one in a few thousand, which is not the best odds. It's not one in a hundred, but it's a damn sight better odds than most raffles out there. That's for damn sure. It's better than a scratch off ticket. It's better than putting a dollar in a slot machine. Uh, it's better than all those things. And at the end of it, you don't feel bad because you're not putting a dollar in a slot machine or buying a scratch off and watching that money just go to line somebody's pockets. You're paying that 25 bucks for a raffle ticket or five for a hundred. And you know that every single penny that you spent there is going to do amazing, amazing things. All right, y'all, let's come back and do it for this video. Thanks for sticking out, and hopefully you don't think I'm too much of a Karen for asking to speak to the manager. It always feels weird, you know? I don't like causing a fuss, but I still really feel like I got done wrong on that one, I, but I paid it because, you know, the, the, the writing's on the wall. I can't not pay it. I wanted to leave you guys with this one, though. So, this Sunday, as I pull out my phone, because I have to look at what date this Sunday is, because I'm a moron. This Sunday the 13th. Sunday the 13th, we're gonna be meeting up at Burt's Barracuda. So we're gonna be meeting up at Burt's Barracuda around noon. Burt's Barracuda in St. Pete, and we're gonna be riding from there. We're gonna hang out there, have a beer, have some lunch if you want to. We're gonna ride from Burt's Barracuda to the Dirty Shame, because it's the pre-Valentine's Day market, put on by the one and only Rats and Wrath. If you went to the last one, you know it was a hell party and lots of cool stuff there if you're looking for a Valentine's Day present for uh, uh, your very special swamp witch uh, this Sunday the 13th noon see you guys at Burt's Barracuda uh, shortly after that have enough time for a couple beers eat some food we're gonna ride over the dirty shame and we're gonna spend some time with rats and wrath and all the cool people down there there's gonna be a lot of familiar faces there lots of cool people we'll all be filming we'll all be having a good time let me do it down in the comments if you're gonna be able to make it out for the ride if you can't make it to Burt's just go head over to the shame and we'll see you there so till next time y'all keep it weird